Learning objectives include lines of defense and cells and secretions of innate immunity. Now, as I mentioned earlier that there are three lines of defense. The first line of defense include physical factors and chemical factors. So physical factors include skin, mucous membrane, lacrimal apparatus, and cilia. As you can very well imagine that the intact skin uh, does not allow penetration of organisms. Only when the integrity of the skin is compromised, these organisms can enter the skin. Similarly, mucous membrane, all our tubular organs like respiratory system and GI tract, the urogenital tract, they're all lined by epithelial cells and they also make a barrier. So organisms that we eat with the food or we take with the food, they do not readily enter into the body because mucous membrane is a barrier, does not allow them to go freely. Lacrimal apparatus is another example of a physical barrier. Our eyes have a lacrimal gland which basically secretes tears and those tears have a mechanical washing action. So the organisms do not stick to the eyes. Cilia is another example. Our respiratory system, the cells, the endothelial cells, they have cilia. These are hair-like projections. They beat towards one direction, unidirectionally only. So the mucus and the organisms that are trapped in the mucus, they are propelled from the lower respiratory system to our upper respiratory system until they reach our larynx and then we cough them out. So this is a kind of physical barrier. The physically remove them, remove organisms. Other physical factors include urine, which physically we can flush the urinary system with the urine. Ear wax is also a physical barrier, the wax in our ears. Peristalsis that we see in our gut, it also propels the, the fecal material and along with fecal material, the organisms are also expelled out. Vomiting, diarrhea, and defecation, these are all physical means by which we can eliminate bacteria from our body. As you can see, this is a, a diagram showing the skin. Skin consists of epidermis, which basically is epithelial layer, so multiple cell layer, followed by a dermis. As you can see, this part here, it connects with the hypodermis here. Organisms normally, the, the skin is a very good barrier, but sometimes organisms can go through the hair follicles, can infect the body. And similarly, the sweat glands, this is a sweat gland, the organisms can go through them as well. But normally, our sweat and our skin secretes some fatty acids. They decrease the pH of the, the skin, and that decreased pH by those fatty acids prevents organisms from establishing infection in the body through the skin. This is a, a diagram of a, basically a photo of a, a goblet cell which is present in the epithelial lining of the respiratory system. As you can see, the, this is a goblet cell which secretes mucus. These small, small granules, they all basically turn into mucus and mucus spreads over the lining and then can trap the organism like here. You see an organism uh, which is trapped in the mucus. And these cilia, these hair-like projections, they beat, as I mentioned earlier, they beat unidirectionally, they beat upward, and they will bring, propel this organisms until it reaches our larynx and pharynx, pharyngeal area, there we, we can then cough that out. Cilia, as I was mentioning, these are cilia that, again, there's another picture, and these are the, those cells that secrete mucus. So the mucus is able to trap the organism, and cilia are able to propel them out. Chemicals uh, also, like physical factors, there are chemical factors. We can see sebum, which is um, oily secretion of our glands in the skin. It has a low pH uh, because of those fatty acids. 
our skin pH is, is around three to five, and there are lysozymes, uh, and it's kind of enzyme produced in body secretions like in sweat, tears, saliva, and other body fluids such as urine. And acidic pH of the stomach. These are all examples of chemical factors that prevent infections from happening. Second line of defense include cells. And we see white blood cells that we call leukocytes. There are various types of leukocytes. One major type is called granulocytes and the other one is agranulocyte. Granulocytes mean that they have small granules in them that those granules have chemicals to kill organisms in them. And examples include neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. As I mentioned, there are agranulocytes, like monocytes and lymphocytes. These are examples of agranulocytes. These, these do not have granules in them. Monocyte is the cell when it is present in the blood is called monocyte, but once it leaves the blood vessels, it is named as macrophages. So macrophages basically are derived from monocytes or in it, they are another name for the same cell when that cell reaches the tissue spaces. Lymphocytes, another example of agranulocytes, there are three different types of lymphocytes, natural killer cells, B cells, and T cells. Natural killer cells is a kind of non-specific cell, so it is part of the innate immunity. But B cells and T cells are not part of innate immunity. They are part of adaptive immune response. This picture shows this is a neutrophil, as you can see, the very typical multi-lobed -nu nucleus. This is eosinophils. They're, they are recognized by their granules, pink granules, blue granules, basically a basophil. And monocyte is also a very typical cell, very easily recognized in the, in the blood picture. has a horseshoe-shaped nucleus. And then this is a lymphocyte. Could be B lymphocyte or could be T lymphocyte. There are few other uh, receptors that we should mention that comes in innate immunity. Uh, that this term tall like receptors, TLRs. These are protein molecules. They're present on the body cells, like T lymphocytes, like macrophages, and they can sense. They can attach to molecules that are present on the organisms. And these are called pathogen-associated molecular patterns, PAMPs. And when tall-like receptor, TLRs, bind to PAMs, they cause synthesis of cytokines by those cells of the immune system. And those cytokines are needed for the both for the innate immune response and for adaptive immune response. So cytokines, when they're released as a result, uh, they can recruit more cells, more immune cells to the, to the body where the organism is trying to establish itself as a form of, form of infection. So in summary, there are various cells and secretions and physical and chemical barriers that make the innate immune response. Thank you.